In this video, I review the fan-made game Pokemon Gaia. Or is it Pokemon Gaia? Hey Google. Gaia. In this video, I review the fan-made game Pokemon Gaia, which is a fantastic Game Boy emulator game and probably one of my favorites thus far in this entire series. So first, let's talk about the story of Pokemon Gaia. Pokemon Gaia is actually very, very unique in its storytelling because you're not a traditional trainer with a traditional Pokemon professor. The Pokemon professor in this region of Orbdus is actually an archeologist and he doesn't have you collect the Pokemon for the Pokedex, but instead he wants you to go investigate these ruins of old because there's been a lot of tremors happening throughout the region and nobody exactly knows why. So after being approached by this archeologist, you are then given the choice of three starter Pokemon and they use the starter Pokemon from the Sinnoh region, which I think was super cool. It's a fan, it's a fan favorite region. So like you might as well give the fan favorite starter Pokemon. Again, it's super unique in this storytelling element because as you go through the game, the gyms are very much like a side quest, though they are still used as milestones and markers throughout your journey. But again, your main quest, your main reason for going on this grand Pokemon adventure is to figure out why the tremors are happening. And there's lots of lore revolving around the Reggie Trio as well as Reggie Gigas. And as you begin to uncover the mysteries of why these tremors are happening and the power of these Reggie Pokemon, you actually discover that it's kind of being brought on by this organization called the New Elders, which really resemble Team Plasma from Pokemon uh, Black and White. But they're this secret like knight type of organization of like mages and things. Again, kind of digging into that ancient like totem archeology span like distant past kind of vibe of this game, which is super cool because they actually are the ones that are awakening the Reggies through these temples that you explore and all these other really cool aspects. And you, they put up a pretty good fight. They don't only just have the really basic grunt like run of the mill Pokemon. They actually have some decent Pokemon in their parties, especially some of the boss new elders. So that's also a really cool touch in that they're not just these punching bags. They actually play a very vital role in the story. So much so that they actually take you to a new like area within the game. Once you get towards the end of the game and you uncover that they're trying to awaken Reggie Gigas to reshape the land, to reshape the earth, giving kind of a team magma kind of vibe in my opinion but they take you to the realm where Reggie Gigas has been dormant and is slumbering and you actually have to fight all the Reggies and it's really really cool because they introduce a new special move that allows you to get transported to this new realm. So overall the storytelling of this game is super cool and really really immersive. There's lots of nooks and crannies to explore um, because they use a lot of kind of like hidden areas that you wouldn't normally see. All of a sudden, if you're walking by a tree line, there might be a white arrow indicating that you can, oh, go through there like a door. Um, and then it leads you to this little hidden grotto area where there might be like some fun treasures like mega stones, special Pokemon. There's also lots of unique uh, Pokemon encounters. They gave you a Marowak encounter that acts like a static encounter, which is pretty cool. You find it in this ruin that's just kind of off to the side somewhere. So yeah, this region is really, really cool in the storytelling because there's lots to explore. It encourages exploration instead of just catching every single Pokemon to fill a dex, uh, which you still can do. It's also encouraged that you just explore the region and see what you might have missed or what the region has to offer. And usually the storytelling does a really, really good job of getting you to go into all these different areas of the game. So that was really, really cool. Next, let's talk about the Orbdus region as a whole, talking about the Pokemon and the gyms that you might encounter in this entire game and this region of Pokemon Gaia. To start off with, the Pokemon of Pokemon Gaia are super, super cool. They use Pokemon from generation one through generation six, which you're probably asking the question, does that mean you can mega evolve your Pokemon? And you would be correct in that assumption because they do introduce mega evolution in this game, much like in Pokemon X and Y, big fan favorite. And it's really cool to see it in this 2D sprite kind of way. And then kind of going into the gym aspect of things, 
Um, the gyms, I think, utilize Mega Evolutions much better than the actual X and Y video games by the Pokemon Company. Once you get Mega Evolutions introduced to you, uh, the gym leaders start having an ace that does have Mega Evolution, but the gym leaders also use kind of untraditional Mega Evolutions sometimes. So you might run into a bug gym and the main Pokemon, the ace that will Mega Evolve there is actually not a Scizor, but it's a Beedrill, which I thought was super unique and gives Beedrill a little extra love because you wouldn't think that it's gonna be the ace and they kind of like turn it on its head and it's like, surprise, it Mega Evolves, this is the ace Pokemon. So that was really, really cool uh, merging the Mega Evolutions more into the actual boss battles and stuff of the game because again once you get mega evolution unlocked almost every single big battle you do so like your rival battles your boss battles your gym battles will have a mega evolution pokemon in their party that they will utilize but one thing i did notice is that this mega pokemon stays the same throughout so let's see your rival for example might have two pokemon on their party that can mega evolve but they'll only use the one Pokemon to Mega Evolve every single time you battle them. So it's a little bit, it gets a little stale still, but it's pretty cool that they actually introduced the Mega Evolution more into that kind of uh, storytelling and the mechanic of the world. And then going on to the gyms. The gyms I thought were fantastic in this game. They all have familiar but unique puzzles to them and all the gym typings are honestly really really unique in my opinion especially on the order in which you like encounter them i can't remember them all off the top of my head in order but i do remember that the first gym you go up against is a fairy gym which i thought was really really unique in that sense because normally the fairy type gyms are a little bit later but this is the first one so you had to kind of you had to kind of prepare your team well because they don't have too many weaknesses and you don't get a lot of Pokemon that are super effective to fairy types early on in the game uh, but they do give you quite a few uh, Pokemon around that town where they will be super effective and they will help you in your journey and then yeah as the game goes on there are plenty of other gyms with lots of unique Pokemon typings they have like a poison type gym that's down in the basement they have like a bug gym a normal type gym a flying gym I think there's lots of really cool like ways to go about the gyms and they all have very, very unique puzzles. And once you get a gems unlocked, they actually get incorporated into the gym challenges. So for the poison gym, for example, you actually have to maneuver through the sewer system to get to the gym leader by using the HM surf. So HMs are in this game, which bit of a bummer that they don't have it as like some sort of ride or some sort of call feature. So you do kind of have to take that into consideration when building your team. I did have to adjust my team a couple times to fit the HM requirements because similar to generation four, there are lots of HMs in this game uh, and they don't always need to stay on your team. So like you might have to do a lot of deleting and reintroducing, but a cool thing is that they did kind of revamp some of the HMs to make them more useful. Like they made cut a bug type move instead of a normal type move. Uh, allowing for different Pokemon to actually learn that HM and probably Pokemon that should learn that move. And they also bumped up its power a little bit. Same with a few other moves uh, along the way that I don't remember off the top of my head, but really cool that they went in and kind of revamped some of those uh, classic HMs to kind of better be useful instead of just chopping down trees. And the Pokemon spread of this region is also fantastic, where just throughout the entire region, you can encounter a bunch of different variety of Pokemon. There's lots of different biomes across the region, and they're not limited to where if you're in the desert, you're only gonna find ground types. You'll be able to find rock types or Pokemon that even kind of fit that description of being in the desert, such as Cacnea and Cacturn, stuff like that. So overall, the region of Orbdus is really, really unique in that sense where there's lots of cool Pokemon you can encounter. There's mega evolutions and mega stones you can find throughout the region, as well as really, really unique gyms and stuff like that as well. And finally, let's kind of talk about the difficulty and what players can expect when playing Pokemon Gaia. So Pokemon Gaia is a fire red kind of ROM hack in that sense. So it's like a GBA ROM hack, which is pretty, pretty cool because it's very versatile. It doesn't really require you to use like the S pad or anything like that. So you can play on any device that can run an emulator and things of that nature. And I will say that the game is 
it's both challenging and very easy to like get ahead and kind of get yourself leveled back up to where you don't have to just use your base level Pokemon the entire time. So the game does level scale very well in my opinion. Never did I really feel that the opposing Pokemon were too powerful like in some of the other game reviews I've done where it just seems like every time you go up against a big battle they go up by 10 or 20 at a time and you've only gone up by like five because the wild Pokemon haven't gone up in level. Throughout the entire region of Orbdus, the wild Pokemon followed the level scaling really, really well to where if you're going up against a level 30 gym, then the wild Pokemon of that region might be like a max of like 25 or lower. But then that allows you for a lot of good grinding EXP, uh, which you do have to do in this game like any Pokemon game. Uh, grinding is something you need to do, especially if you plan on swapping your team a bunch, which there are lots of opportunities to switch your team. But like I said, there's also a lot of opportunities to get uh, some awesome EXP so that your team can continue getting stronger and stronger. Uh, never did I really feel that I was getting bogged down by the level scaling. Even going up against the Elite Four, I found it kind of, I don't want to say easy, but after some training and actually putting some thought into my team and the mechanics of my team, the Elite Four was a challenge, but it was a good challenge. It felt like a Pokemon game, but without like it just being handed to you, like in some of the more later generations of Pokemon. And just some final thoughts of the game. I think, again, Pokemon Gaia is a fantastic, fantastic ROM hack. Um, it's really, really cool to see so much love and care put into this type of game because there really was a lot of it with all the extra like side maps and all the extra things you can do in this game, the mega evolutions having to be figured out for this 2D sprite kind of gameplay was really, really cool to see as well as just like the world felt so immersive to me as someone that really likes to immerse themselves in video games. I think they did a fantastic job with not only the storytelling, but also making it what a Pokemon game kind of needed in this generation. In the mainline games that we have with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, for example, it's a lot more open world, it's a lot more immersive, but that's all the way in generation nine. This game kind of looking like generation like three was really cool to see that it was this immersive and that the gyms felt like a side quest in all honesty. They were there as like barriers to keep you from getting too ahead of yourself, but they weren't the main storyline. It wasn't like it was just keep going to the gyms, keep going to the gyms. Even your rival talked about just getting stronger in general and helping uncover the mysteries of these tremors and the world of Orbdus and all this archaeology play uh, that you get to do in the game. You get to find lots of fossil Pokemon, which is really cool. They're just random items throughout like caves and on paths. So that's another really cool feature of this game is that they really hit home with the archaeology and they really hit home with this kind of like wor ancient world vibe of uncovering the mysteries of the past in the present. I want to thank you all for watching and remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Korn's Quest. Remember to leave a comment down below letting me know what Pokemon game you want to see me review next, uh, as well as your thoughts on Pokemon Gaia. Whether you've played the game or whether you plan on playing the game, I encourage everyone to try and find a variation of this game to play. It is super, super fun. And if you're too impatient for these videos to be released, if you want to know exactly what I'm reviewing and my thoughts of a game as it's happening, be sure to hit up the Patreon, which is down in the description, where you get early access to videos from my live streams, as well as you get updates on my game reviews uh, as journal entries as I play through the game over on Patreon. Again, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all next time. And until then, happy questing, y'all.